it's a difficult thing to get divorced financially and emotionally and every other sort of way because um, the feelings between my husband and I uh, are very compatible. We're still friends, but we d we're, we're not man and wife. We never will be. The thing about it is that it's just dragging everything down to a level of triviality uh, that looks especially funny when you hold it up against the uh, sacred, pompous, inflated language of the marriage vows and eternity and all this stuff. If you were to work in an agency like the Catholic Family Welfare Bureau, where we have in care at any one time just on 600 children who are the products of broken homes or illegitimate children born out of wedlock, well then you'd see why society uh, was really had an, it really had an investment in the whole uh, state of marriage. What, what, what will two young people get out of marriage from the point of view of the church? Well, they'll get the grace of the sacrament. I'd just like to start off by getting a, a voice level, so could you identify yourself, your name and occupation? Yes, David. Um, I'm the Reverend W.G. Coglin and I'm the director of the Marriage Guidance Council of New South Wales. Good, that's fine. Um, well, perhaps to start with, what in fact does the marriage counsellor actually do, and who are the people that he sees? Well, the people that he sees uh, come from a quite a large number of sections of the community. Uh, most of the people who come to us are married. They feel that they have got uh, problems and difficulties that they've tried to cope with on their own, and they haven't succeeded. And they're sufficiently serious about getting these problems solved, if possible, to come to what they regard as more qualified help. Um, in these days, I think it's generally agreed, in Australia anyway, that if you ask people what's life for, uh, what's it about, they'd say, well, um, um, to get satisfaction, to be happy. In marriage, it's the same, whether it's thought out or not. We go into marriage because we believe that it will bring us satisfaction, it will bring us happiness of one kind or another. Can nobody love you, baby? Like I'm loving you right now. Cause I don't know how to love you like I do. All right. Well, and if a person comes to a stage where he says, well, this is not working out, I'm disappointed, I didn't think it would be like this, or she says, well, this is no good, what he's doing to me is, is, is not right, I, I, won't, I won't tolerate this. It's the feeling of unhappiness, dissatisfaction, non-fulfillment. Mm -hmm. This is what makes people want to get out of marriage. We tried once or twice for reconciliations, had separate bedrooms eventually, and everything was a complete and awful mess, and I became suicidal at the end of this. It was a shattering performance. But the only possible, that you can't, I couldn't stay there and submit children, myself, and my husband to this tremendous unhappiness. It was better to go through something shattering and to at least preserve some part of, of an honesty and a good thing and to leave and to cut it and to finish. And this is what happened. Our situation was uh, more than a passing infatuation, but when we're just not meant to live together permanently all our lives. Marriage lasted for a length of time, but it just doesn't last for eternity, which is the whole idea of it. This is what's wrong with the institution. It's meant for eternity. Human feelings are fragile like everything else, and it's slowly destroyed and eroded by time. feeling that, you know, Celia just might leave me if we didn't get married. And the very 
moment a person signs his name on a thing saying, I do take bread for life. This is the word for life. And I promise, these promises are made, and, and you, you promise to, um, to cleave to one person. Now, you know, there's, there's a marked degree of dishonesty in this because you, you don't know whether you're going to be able to do this. You know, you want to, perhaps, for this time. And basically, it's a, it's a vocation for their own sanctification. It's a means to uh, saving their souls through living in the marriage state. And I think, in some ways, you're um, more really married when you don't have to live together than when you sort of do, by law. People sort of are staying there and sticking it out um, at everybody's expense. People can't really know each other so well if they, if they haven't had any intimate relationships or, or haven't lived together. I think that's a fallacy. Perhaps they might get to know one another sexually. This is only a very minor part of marriage. Marriage in our society now has all sorts and kinds of social complications, legal, property, economic, and so on. I think it'll be quite a while before these change significantly. As long as there's something like this, women in particular will want security, and women will still continue, many of them, to want children if it's only one or two. I think it will be women rather than men that will be responsible for the insistence on marriage. And I think that men will have to take this into account and somehow or other curb their own more free roving impulses. Hello, Sandor. It's David here. Good, thanks. Uh, is it still all right for me to come over this afternoon? That's good. You got plenty of grog on? But got a problem. Marriage? No, 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 I'm not getting married, but um, I've been asking a lot of questions and talking to a lot of people and I've got a big problem, so I'll come and see you about it. I'll explain it when I see you. But just do me a favour, will you? Don't get engaged while I'm on my way to see you. Yeah. No, I'll explain all that too. I'll see you soon. OK, bye-bye. Beloved, we are gathered here in the sight of God and in the face of this congregation to join together this man and this woman in holy matrimony, which is an honorable estate instituted of God himself, signifying unto us the mystical union that is between Christ and his church. Which holy estate... When we have the difficulty, Christ say, in Australia, of one marriage and ten breaking present. down, well then perhaps, yes, something has to be done about this. But let's emphasize the positives. These and is commended in holy writ to be honorable among all men. And therefore, well, people it is just not live by together, let's say, when they've run the course of their feelings, they can just walk out. But marriage makes it a little more difficult. I think we were more married before we actually got a legal sanction on our relationship than um, when we had that legal sanction. To which holy estate these two persons present... Come I agree, it would be very nice if it lasted forever, but it just doesn't seem to. Australia, of one marriage in ten breaking down. Together. Let him now speak, or else hereafter forever hold his peace. I think it will be women rather than men that will be responsible for the insistence on marriage. And I think that men will have to take this into account and somehow or other curb their own more free roving impulses. Oh, very true. How about that? You have a problem, David. <coughs> you know, I started going into all this because, uh, because of, um, you know, Jan? Yes, I know that well. I've been living with her for about a year, you know, and she, a couple of friends of ours, Bob and a fellow girl called Lorraine, and uh, they decided to get married after all. They're talking about not getting married and, you know, feeling sort of quite comfortable and happy, you know, what they're doing. And uh, now they've all changed their minds, and Jan's got really screwed up about it. I saw it about that time, you know, told her about it, and she just walked off, left, you know, really, really cut up. And, uh, 
Especially with Bob's attitude, you know, changing completely. So I went out and tried to find out a little bit about it, and... Uh, I haven't learned to think. I'm just as confused now as I, as I ever was. What is the basic reason why you got married rather than living with him? Or what was it that made you get married or made you decide to get married? Well, I loved him and I thought that's a word I shouldn't use, but um, I wanted to spend the rest of my life with him. I want to eventually have his children and just live with him for the, for the rest of my life.